Well, um, clearly we've got, we're, we're, start, we're from a standpoint of a government that is in deep, deep uh, political trouble um, and is desperately trying to find a way out. Um, so far, it, it looks as though a significant part of its strategy is based on hoping that by focusing on issues that are particularly associated with supporting the Conservatives, um, that means in particular uh, focusing on immigration, or trying perhaps also to focus on some of the, so what we've come to learn is the, to call the cultural issues, um, that uh, they might provide a pathway of getting the Conservatives, of getting voters back. Also by, uh, we've seen more recently focusing on some of the concerns that they may have about the transition in, on, on climate change, um, et cetera, et cetera. As well as I think, I think frankly, the Conservative Party will also want to talk about Brexit. Um, uh, they were hoping to reconnect with their core electorate. Um, the trouble is, however, um, as to whether or not, and of course, they're, they've also tried to, trying to persuade people that the current prime minister, at least, is competent. Whatever your views about his two predecessors, um, this, at least, is a regular guy who can run the country effectively. So combination of competence and appealing traditional conservative values seems to be the conservative strategy. And hoping, hoping, hoping that perhaps also a few tax cuts will also come along the way. Okay. The trouble is that if you actually look to see what are the things that have driven down support for the Conservative Party and are still driving down support for the Conservative Party, none of those things really feature. Problem number one is what I would call the ethical issue, which is effectively, and it, it, amazingly, it's still, it's, you might think we stopped talking about lockdown. We've not stopped talking about lockdown. Public First did a fascinating poll asking people about what do you think of the pluses and minuses of the, of the, of the conservative regime? Uh, in the last 13 years, and breaking the rules on lockdown is in the top five, okay? Um, and we have to remember the Conservative Party was not behind in the polls until lockdown and Partygate first uh, hit on the, uh, on, on, on the snare. Problem number two is the economy. Conservative voters who think the economy is doing badly voted Conservative in 2019, much, much, much less likely now to say they're going to vote Conservative. The third problem is the NHS. People who think the NHS is in a dire state, who voted Conservative in 2019, are much less likely to vote Conservative. And at the moment, at least, it is concerned about the state of the public services that trumps a wish for lower levels of taxation. Um, conversely, if you look at people's evaluations of what's been happening to immigration, yes, lots of Conservative voters think it's too high, but it's almost unrelated to whether or not conservative people who voted conservative in 2019 have defected from the conservatives. So immigration is not the problem. Leadership, yes, is the problem, but persuading people to forget the ethics of leadership is not that easy. Oh, and by the way, and I, I remembered this because I, at the moment I'm having to write about the 97 election, and of course, what we're looking at the moment is incredibly similar to 1997, a government that in part at least has been ended up in where it is because of a fiscal stroke financial crisis and governments tend not to survive those, but the Liz Trust fiscal event is hanging around this government. But also the, the John Major regime of 92 to 97 cut taxes both in 1995 and in 1996 and it didn't do any good because you are also then looking at an electorate that was concerned about the state of public services. Now, true, the Labour Party didn't quite twig to the fact that this was the problem and not even they believed that actually the, the, the public were willing to spend more taxes. The Labour Party eventually got there by about 1999 after two years in office. So the view I take is at the end of the day, what the Conservative Party has to be able to do is it has to be able to campaign on the economy 
and it has to be able to campaign on the NHS. In other words, it has to be able to answer two questions. Can I feed my kids? And if I fall ill, will the NHS be able to look after me? And at the moment, there are too many people out there who give a negative answer to that question. And unless and until the Conservatives can give an answer to that question, their chances of the staging of enough of a recovery to be in office after the next election at the moment don't look that bright.